Hi, I'm Lara, and this is Trip Train Trilogy. Today on Trip Talk, I'll be talking about fictional families. For most people, family is a very big part of their life. However, in fiction, most families are either dead or just not present. You would think all these writers obsessed with being hashtag relatable. I hate myself. But anyway, you think these writers would utilize family to make their protagonists more relatable. However, none of them, most of them really don't. And I think I know why. One, because it takes effort to add another character to the story, especially if they aren't necessary to the plot you already have planned. Two, because the family will probably be concerned about the protagonist's well-being and might try to get in the way of adventuring for the sake of their safety. And three, because orphans get automatic sympathy. Now these are all good reasons, but personally I like a good fictional family and I've seen others who agree. When it comes to the point about automatic sympathy, it is true, you do feel a bit of sympathy for the orphans, however I feel like the market of fiction has become so saturated with orphans that a protagonist who is an orphan doesn't quite pack as much of a punch as it used to. And though I do feel bad for them, it's more of a in a distant way of being like, that sucks instead of actually empathizing with them. Now, if their family dies during the story and I get to experience grief with them in a realistic way, or I get to know the family and their relationship with the protagonist before they die, then I'll feel bad for them. However, with so many characters just being like, yeah, my parents died years ago, it was sad, it's not as... It doesn't quite pack that much of a punch because it's so common in fiction. And then with the second point about parents getting in the way, that creates conflict. Conflict and relationships is what draws readers to stories. So if you have a relationship, like a familiar one that most people can relate to, and it creates conflict of the protagonist needs to do something but their family's trying to stop them, that kills two birds with one stone and adds more conflict to your story and adds another relationship that most people can empathize with. So personally, I would think that that could actually improve your story by adding family in that case. And I know it takes effort to try to figure out how the protagonist like gets around their parents. Like maybe they have to sneak out or convince them to agree with them. But why should your protagonist's goal be easy anyway? And I don't necessarily think that's a flaw. I just think it's more work trying to figuring out the plot. However, one good reason for not having family is that you don't need family in the story. In my current story, I've cut so many characters I realized I didn't need. And if you really don't need family in the story and it just clutters the plot, then it's probably better not to have them. However, I don't think family is as much of an obstruction to the plot as it appears based on how many books just don't have family whatsoever. And there are a lot of ways that family actually fit in that you might not think of right away. Now based on the age of the protagonist, it would make sense for family to be prevalent in both middle grade and YA. And though I actually have seen quite a lot of family in middle grade and I think I've seen it done well, YA is very much lacking in family and when it is there, I feel like a lot of the times it's very two-dimensional or the family's just evil for reasons. One example of family done well, I think, is Percy Jackson. Percy's mother feels like her own individual with her own hopes and dreams and her own life going on as Percy goes on his adventures. And then Percy's relationship with his half-brother creates interesting conflict that forces Percy to grow as a person. And I think both of these relationships improve the story and make it better. However, a lot of times in stories I find family to be very one-dimensional and poorly written. Either all they do is support the protagonist from the sidelines or they're pure evil and want to murder their own children without any good reasons. And personally, if you have a familiar relationship in your story, I think if you want it to be realistic, it should be just as complex as your romantic and platonic relationships in your story. Because sometimes family is supportive, but sometimes they also mess up and make mistakes. And that's what makes them feel real and interesting. And the family shouldn't always be the one in the wrong. Sometimes the family should be right and the protagonist should be wrong. And also the protagonist's relationship with different family members should all be different. His relationship with his father, his mother, his brother, his sister should all vary and be different between each of them. Because each family member is an individual and each individual should react differently to each other. There shouldn't be any like, the parents shouldn't feel like exact clones, but 
And of course, sometimes you do need your protagonist to be an orphan or to leave their family. However, that doesn't actually mean that the story doesn't have to have any family in it whatsoever. For example, Harry Potter, Harry is an orphan. However, he was raised by his aunt and uncle, the Dursleys. And though I will say the Dursleys are pretty one-dimensional in that they're abusive and selfish, I think Dudley actually develops fairly well as a character based on the amount of time he gets on the page. And we get to see more family than just them. We get to meet Harry's godfather. We get to meet Ron's family, the Weasleys. And the villains even get family. They have the Malfoys. And the Malfoys family is actually fairly well developed. And one thing I liked about the Malfoys is despite the fact that they're bad guys and they do terrible things, they do genuinely love their son. Which I appreciate because I find it a bit hard to believe when I read a book and the villain is a parent and they murder their own children or torture their own children or enslave their own children for not really any particular reason. That concerns me a bit because I find it hard to believe that every single antagonist is not capable of love. And by giving antagonists family, I feel like that fleshes them out and makes them for feel more real. If you want your antagonist to feel more complex and not just pure evil, giving them family that they care about could do that. And another book where a family really can't be present for most of the story but is still important to the story is The Hunger Games because Katniss's love for her sister is the catalyst for the entire story. And Susan Collins could have easily just made a Katniss an orphan and have her just have her name drawn instead of volunteering. However, I felt like I feel like that would have just made Katniss a more flat character as opposed to making her selfless and loving for her sister. And it adds more conflict by adding the family to the story despite the fact that the family can't always be present. Now, personally, I get really attached to fictional siblings. <laughs> if a if a protagonist's friend dies, I feel bad for them, but if their sibling dies, I go up to my sister and give her a hug, only to get punched for touching her, but I really get more invested in that relationship. Or if your main character is betrayed by a friend. That's sad, it's not really that uncommon, but it's still sad, but if they're betrayed by a sibling, that just makes the blow even more painful because it's like, dang, you're family and you just stabbed them in the back. And one thing I want to note is that a good person is not necessarily a good parent and a good and a bad person is not necessarily a bad parent. For example, Katniss's mom is a good person. She's a good guy. She doesn't do anything bad, but she's not really that great of a parent. And then Narcissa Malfoy from Harry Potter, she's a pretty she's on the bad guy side she's really not that great of a person she's pretty selfish and only cares about her family but she does care about her family and she's a fairly good mother risking herself to protect her son and i think that's something you can take note of is that being a good or bad person does not mean you're a good or bad parent and vice versa and one more thing i'd like to note is that family should family and how parents treat their children should be a product of their environment so if your story takes place in medieval times, they should feel like medieval parents and not be like modern parents. And though that's not as common of a problem, I still want to add that in. But overall, I think family can definitely be used more in fiction. It makes the story more realistic. It's something most people can empathize with and it's a great opportunity to add conflict. Now that's all I have to say about family for now. I hope this was somewhat helpful and I'll see you Later.